Well, welcome to Royal City Brewery in Guelph, Ontario. We have been giving you the bigger picture of the beer scene uh, across uh, Waterloo Region and Wellington County, but now we're going to go down to the very smallest little particles, the little microbes, the, the small little fungi that are some of the most important parts of uh, the brewing process. And joining me is Richard Priest. He's with an organization called Escarpment Laboratories. And we're going to learn about some of the most finite little details that have a huge impact on the way beer tastes and the way it evolves. Uh, first, uh, Richard, welcome. And I Thank gotta you. ask, tell me a little bit about what the name means, Escarpment Laboratories. Why'd you pick that name for, for your company? I think I think settling on the name was was probably one of the one of the toughest struggles we had as a company. Um, it's actually really hard to I mean name your company. Uh, you wouldn't think, but we, we found that it was, a, it was a difficult time, and what we wanted was a name that sort of reflected uh, the local geography um, and, and also uh, could be taken seriously. And we, we settled on the escarpment because that's sort of the most uh, characteristic geographic feature in our area in southern Ontario. And when people hear escarpment, they think southern Ontario. And one of the goals of our company is actually developing wild yeasts that we've isolated from this area that are from, you know, essentially the terroir of, of the escarpment. Um, so that really ties everything together uh, into our overall goal as a company. Well, let's try to get a little bit of a picture of who you guys are. This is a startup that grew out of the University of Guelph, but give us a little bit of a, a brief background of how you got to this point where you're making yeast for uh, professional brewers. Yeah, um, basically I, I was doing some research in my undergrad, um, in my bachelor's at Guelph, and I was, I was working in this, in this yeast lab. We were doing wine yeast research. But I was a home brewer, and I was sick of paying for the little homebrew pitches. So I started to bank, bank my, my homebrew yeast. Store it. Sorry? Banking, storing it. Yeah, storing it, freezing it down um, indefinitely so that you always have access to it. Um, and then the other guy in the lab at the time, the other beer nerd in the lab, Angus, said, hey, you know, OK, it's cool that you're doing that, but you know, do you think that maybe breweries would be interested in, in using these or maybe even buying them? And I was like, yeah, I hadn't really thought of actually turning that into a business. Um, so that's sort of where it came from. And we, we ended up approaching a few local breweries, asking, hey, you know, if, if there were a local option available, would, would you be interested in, in trying the yeast and, and eventually buying it? And the, the response was, was incredible. Everyone was, was very interested, and every, everyone since then has been very supportive of what we're doing. Well, I want to pick up on that terroir uh, idea in just a moment. But uh, tell me uh, how you do it. What is the process that by one by where you make yeast so basically we start from from a single cell I mean I have a little plate here an agar plate with uh, yeast on it and we start from well not necessarily from a single cell from a single colony of yeast uh, just one of these little dots and that goes into a small volume of liquid and then from there we just continually step it up it keeps uh, growing in size as a liquid culture um, to the point where we have enough yeast for up to, right now, up to 4,000 liters of beer. Um, and then we concentrate the yeast and it gets packaged as a, as a liquid slurry and shipped off to breweries. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the, the process of uh, this banking. If I'm a brewer and I want to use particular least yeast, is there an order catalog and I call you guys and I ask for it and you ship it to me? Or is it something that's crafted each time specifically in a proprietary fashion for an individual brewer? Um, so, I mean, there's a little bit of both. Uh, we have a main strain uh, catalog of the strains that, we, that are most popular and that we uh, know a lot about, so we're very comfortable growing them. But we do also have a strain collection of over 400 yeasts um, as well. And, and there are breweries that have their own proprietary yeast bank with us, and that's something that we also do is, is allow breweries to send us their yeast. If they have a house yeast that they've sort of had acclimatized to their brewery over time, they can send it to us and we can keep it for them until they, they need it again and then grow it up on spec. Tell us a little bit about terroir now. I mean, it's a sort of a sense of place when it comes to wine. I think a lot of people see the term in that context. Mm -hmm. How do you use it for yeast? So one of the things that we've focused on is isolating yeast from our local environment. So going out to orchards and swabbing apples going out to hop farms and picking hops or picking fruits in the, in the area, or even having brewers from further, further afield, like Nova Scotia, send us samples. Uh, we then take those samples, we, we isolate yeast from them, and these are yeasts that are actually part of the, the geography. They're yeasts that are from a place, and they have distinct flavor profiles that 
set that are different from each other, that are also very different from commercially available yeasts, that we think is indicative of this idea of terroir or the taste of a place. This must, this must make brewers really, really excited when you, present, uh, when you present what you're doing and tell them about this. What is their reaction? Um, I mean, some are more excited than others, but yeah, there's some that have really latched on to this, this wild local yeast concept and some that have been very excited. Uh, one of the things they've told us is, okay, it's great that you have these yeasts, but you need to tell us what they do and how they behave. So that's part of why, why we actually test the yeasts out here at Royal City Brewing. Um, so that we actually know how they behave and that and then okay You give us a, a wild yeast with unique character and you can tell me you know what temperature it requires all of its nutritional requirements Okay, I can go ahead and use this now and create a beer that has a you know this unique Ontario flavor So it's a it's not just an academic theoretical laboratory uh, Endeavor it's actually no. in the field in the brewery and a practical way. I think, I think we're all so sick of theoretical academics at this point that we want to get our hands dirty as much as possible.